Hello everyone and welcome to the game everyone is talking about. It is of course Shakhrir Mamdyarov versus Anish Giri from yesterday's Aim Chess preliminaries. It is round three and both of them are having a, a nice tournament so far. Mamdyarov, uh, especially since he defeated Magnus Carlsen in the in the first round, uh, Anish defeated Vidit uh, and now they face each other in the third round. It's quite a game. Many pieces are are getting sacrificed. Uh, everything is hanging and it's uh, well, it, it, it's just a, a very nice game. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, Mamidyarov has the white pieces and he opens with d4. We have knight to f6, sorry about that. Uh, and uh, now there are a couple of, uh, well, moves that uh, come to mind here. Like uh, c4 is something we see very often, knight to f3, something we see bishop to g5, Dortrompovsky, also something we see fairly often, but knight to c3, it's a bit uh, rare, it's only the fourth most popular continuation, but, um, you know, uh, for a rapid game, people uh, people will use it. So here, pawn to d5 by Anish and the bishop to f4. We have pawn to e6 and now the immediate knight to b5, going after the uh, c7 pawn. And yes, this does look like something you would try against your uncle, but it's actually perfectly fine. So knight to a6, uh, defending the c7 pawn, pawn to e3 and now bishop to e7. We have pawn to h4. Now, there is only one game in the database where pawn to h4 was played, and it was played this year in the Abu Dhabi, uh, not in Abu Dhabi, in the Sharjah Masters um, uh, between uh, Arjun Erigaisi and Haik Marti Martirosian uh, that uh, ended in a draw, I believe. Uh, but here we have uh, uh, castles, also uh, as it was played in their game, knight to a 3, c6, knight back to c3. And now in that game uh, that I've mentioned, uh, uh, Martirosian played bishop to d7, but here we have queen to b6 by Anish. And it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So the b2 pawn is hanging, but um, not really. Uh, a3 by Mamedyarov. And now you can't capture the pawn. If you capture a pawn, just knight a4 and the queen hangs. Uh, so that's not uh, what Anish will do. Anish, of course, strikes against the center. He plays pawn to c5. And now bishop captures an a6. Queen captures. And now it seems like uh, you maybe you shouldn't have uh, just given up your light square bishop like that. Now the queen also prevents the white king from castling. Uh, but that only matters if you're planning to castle. Mamidaro just pushes h5. Uh, so h6, stopping any further advancement of the pawn, and now pawn to g4. Just going all out here, uh, preparing g5. Also probably one of the reasons as the black queen is so far away from uh, the king side, uh, maybe uh, she will not be in time to help out with the defense of the black king. And also... Uh, I think uh, what um, is even more important, the Mamidyarov did beat Magnus Carlsen in the first round, so of course now everything must bend to his will, uh, and naturally he pushes g4. Uh, we have knight captures on g4, it's a free pawn, so why not? Anish captures it, rook to g1, and now pawn to f5, uh, cementing that knight on g4. Uh, Mamidyarov attacks and knight to e5, and now c captures on d4, attacking the knight on c3. Uh, Shakhdar recaptures, and now we have bishop to f6 and now uh, how do you how do you play this? The problem is uh, you really want to open up the G file for the rook. But if you play knight captures on G4 and F captures and uh, for example rook captures, then a nice E5 and you can resign this as a white. So uh, although you want to break through, this is not the way to do it. So Mamedero finds a way to do it and he plays rook captures on G4, keeps the knight alive. Uh, F captures on G4 and now queen captures on G4 and now. Uh, okay, uh, you know, bishop captures on h6 is coming, this is definitely a threat, uh, but if you play something like king to h8, uh, you don't really uh, gain all that much, plus a white can just, whenever a white wants, play an ig6 check, pick up the rook here, so instead we have pawn to b5 by Anish, later on you can play a queen to b7, you can add the queen to help out with the defense of the king side, plus also we want to play a5, b4, and so on. So bishop captures on h6, for the moment this bishop is guarding g7, so it's not a problem, Queen to b7, and now queenside castles by Mamedyarov. Uh, Anish starts with a5, prepares b4, and now knight captures on b4. Just giving up a full knight to get rid of the queen's control over the g7 pawn. But even if you don't capture this knight, the d6 is coming, so you, you might as well capture it. So here, queen captures on b5, and now bishop captures on g7. Mamedyarov just uh, giving up all of his pieces. Bishop captures on g7, and now pawn to h6, preparing checkmate here with queen captures on g7, but rook to a7, not, not a problem, uh, black is up in material, uh, and now the next move is key. 
there are many uh, many nice um, uh, moments where we could have made it a pause the video moment, but I think this one is the nicest. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning move for Mamed Yarov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the, the forced mate in two, although not a forced one, it's a forced one only if, uh, you know, Anish allows it. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to h1. That's preparing the forced mate in two. Uh, because now, let's say you play something like rook b7, you go after the b2 pawn, it's just a matter of h7 check, only move king h8 and knight to g6 is checkmate. So that's why rook to h1 is so powerful. So here we have rook captures on f2, uh, freeing up the f8 square for the black king so you don't have to go to h8 so h7 check king to f8 and now uh, like i said there are many moves that you can play here to win the game uh, but mamedar of course uh, chooses the nicest one he wants the um, uh, well he wants everyone uh, to, to, to say after the game will be shown online that uh, he sacrificed his queen at least once so he plays queen captures on g7 but you could do many other things you could play h8 promote to a queen h8 promote to a rook uh, and any move is fine here. Uh, queen captures on g7 is played, rook captures on g7, and now h8 queen. Again, the, the king is in check, the rook is hanging, so rook to g8, and now knight to g6 check. Again, the only winning move, very interesting. Knight to g6 check, and now how do you play this? If you try to defend the rook, that of course doesn't work. Just rook h7 check, king captures, and now you started the king hunt. For those of you who are interested, uh, the king will get checkmated. I'm just gonna quickly show you where, uh, all the way after d4 queen captures and d4, this is where the black king would get checkmated uh, if um, uh, I I if you try to defend the rook. So king to e8 was played, now comes queen captures on g8, king to d7, and now knight to e5 with check. We have king to d6, now still hoping um, uh, Mamedara will capture on c8, so uh, maybe Anish can play something like rook to f1 and stir some trouble, but no, Mamedara just plays knight to d3, and now the bishop is hanging, the rook is hanging, and of course it was in this position on move 30 that Anish Giri resigned the game. Uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So there you have it. That's the power of be beating Magnus in round one. Uh, you you just um, well you you're just um, uh, so so inspired that you are able to create a masterpiece uh, like this. And uh, you know just uh, Anish plays h6, just g4. You don't think about it. You open up the position. The the black queen is all all the way on the queen side. Uh, you know it, it has to work. Even though the position is still sort of better for black, but I mean in rapid, who will? Uh, who, who will defend this. Uh, and interestingly, in this position where King Tadisuk was played, you can actually capture the bishop here. I'm just going to show it because it's fun. And after rook to f1 check, look at this. King to d2, now rook to f2 check, king c3, and there are no more checks, and you just resign. I mean, uh, be beautiful position. Uh, all sorts of nasty ideas being threatened here. I mean, just spectacular. Uh, so yeah, after this knight to d3 move, Mamedyarov resigned and uh, so Anish resigned and a beautiful victory for Shahrir Mamedyarov in round three uh, of um, uh, the aim chess preliminaries 2022. And uh, well, it's a very nice game. I'm sure you guys are interested. What about the standings? Who is leading after day one? I will just say Nodirbek Abdusatorov is the leader and we are going to discuss that a bit more in future videos. So thank you all. I will see you soon and uh, have an excellent rest of your day.